okay to the ion exchange india limited's q1 fy25 earnings conference call as a reminder all the participants line will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone i now hand the conference over to mr anud sonpal from valorum advisors thank you and over to you mr sonpal thank you good afternoon everyone and a very warm welcome to you all my name is anud sonpal from valorum advisors we represent the investor relations of iron exchange india limited on behalf of the company and valorum advisors i would like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings conference call for the first quarter of financial year 2025 before we begin let me mention a short cautionary statement Some of the statements made in today's earnings call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties, which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's beliefs as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings con call is purely to educate and bring bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. Let me now introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for opening remarks. We firstly have with us Mr. Ankur Patni, Executive Director, Mr. Vasan Naik, Group Chief Financial Officer, Mr. N M Randeve, Group Head of Financial Planning and Risk Management, and Mr. Milind Puranik, Company Secretary. Without any further delay, I request Mr. Vasan Naik to start with his opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Anuj. Good afternoon, everybody. It is a pleasure to welcome you all to the earnings conference call for the first quarter of FY25. For the quarter under review, on a consolidated basis, the company reported operating income of INR 5,676 million, an increase of around 18% year on year. The EBITDA reported was INR 641 million, representing an increase of 31% year on year. And the margin, EBITDA margin, stood at 11.29 percent, with a net profit of INR 448 million, an increase of around 35 percent year on year, while the PAT margin was in the region of around 7.89 percent. Let me now take you through the quarterly segmental performance on a consolidated basis. In the engineering division, the revenue for the quarter was INR 3,235 million, increase of 13 percent year on year. The EBIT for this segment was INR 188 million, representing an increase of 26 percent year on year. The segment witnessed steady order inflows of capital of medium-sized jobs during the quarter. The domestic inquiry bank remains robust, and we are hopeful that the finalisation of some large value opportunities would accelerate in the next few months. The engineering segment recorded improved turnover on year-on-year -year basis, largely due to the execution of some of the international contracts. We expect the pace of execution of the larger EPC job to increase in the coming quarters. At the end of Q1, FY25, the total order book for the engineering division stood at INR 3,394 crores. Coming to the uh, chemical segment, the revenue for the quarter was INR 1,994 million, an increase of 36% year on year. The EBIT was INR 498 million, an increase of 36% year on year. The segment recorded improved revenue year on year while maintaining uh, steady margin. <laughs> Lastly, the consumer division segment, the revenue for the quarter was INR 660 million, increase of 9% year on year. The loss for the quarter was INR 34 million versus 15 million in the same period of the previous year. The segment has shown revenue growth on a year on year basis. Our new product launches are gaining acceptability in the market. We can now open the floor to the Q&A session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Chetan Vora from Abacus Asset Manager. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. 
so on the engineering side i was looking at the up order book on the qq the order book has just uh, gone down by 17 crores so how do we see the order execution for the year which is close to the order book as of now is 800 crores sir 813 crores which we were earlier you know guiding out to be completed by fy 25 Hello. The order book uh, uh, position remains good, and we are expecting uh, good order flows in the ensuing months and uh, quarters. Uh, that would ensure that uh, you know, even while we continue to execute the very very hard the orders at hand will support future growth uh, continuously. as far as the period of concern we are expecting that uh, during the subsequent quarters the execution and invest will improve compared to where we are today uh, the next quarter uh, and thereafter we should be seeing improved execution of the up contract in in specific which Uh, had a slight impact of uh, the elections and the related cash flows which we expect will gradually get removed as the months move and therefore as i said that second half is expected to be significantly better than the first half all right but the, the, the do we foresee that up order will be getting executed uh, by uh, by the end of this year UP uh, contract would get substantially executed uh, by the end of this year. Uh, however, it is also a function of the uh, funds which get released for the contract for completing the remaining portion. And the second element is, of course, the approvals which get received from the government. But we are uh, very hopeful that by the end of this year, a substantial portion will get completed. Right, sir. On the profitability, uh, the previous quarter, uh, despite on a, a large chunk of revenue of 500 crores, we had reported a margin of 9.6 percent, and then you had told us that, that there was some legacy project which got hit, and because of that, there was a cost overrun. And we uh, expect the similar thing to continue in quarter one of this year. But uh, looking at the margin, the margin looks to be quite steady on a viable level. So the, whether the cost of uh, Uh, Spino was uh, seen in this quarter. Okay, it is now we are largely done. There, uh, there was a cost spillover, uh, and uh, as I had mentioned, that that uh, uh, contract which has had an adverse impact on the overall uh, engineering margins. That contract is not yet uh, executed fully, and therefore that overhang of its impact would continue. Uh, in the next quarter also and it will taper out after that uh, but uh, you know in terms of the yoy uh, stability that's something which uh, is also a function of the other contracts that we are executing which have supported a uh, 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 a decent margin level and therefore in spite of a slight adverse impact coming in from the one or two uh, issues it has we have managed to maintain those levels right and by when we expect this you know these uh, the legacy project to get completed by what time frame from year on uh, so as i said i would expect that the next quarter would continue to face uh, this particular project's uh, uh, impact and only thereafter it will start to taper out uh, by the uh, end of the third and fourth quarter uh, most of the contract will get fully executed right and sir on the chemical front uh, the revenue growth was 15% and with a good uh, sort of profitability how do should how should we see this vertical sir for the cap uh, with respect to chemicals for the full year chemical business continues to do uh, reasonably uh, well and we are expecting uh, the growth momentum to continue uh, as you have seen in the first quarter likewise the margin also remains uh, at a reasonably uh, robust level uh, 
as we have been mentioning in the past also, that if the input price scenario, uh, the foreign exchange scenario, and the overall supply dynamics do change in a very material way, we we should be able to maintain these margin levels. Right, sir. So lastly, from my end, uh, we, we, are, we are expecting, we are, uh, in, in our uh, presentation, we, uh, we have always mentioned, and in our con at the start of the conference, we have always mentioned that we are looking to, we are working on one of few of the large deals, which will be getting certified in the coming quarters. But it, it is now, you know, since uh, many, many quarters, we have been seeing the same statement. Uh, mm -hmm. By then, you know, we, we can see, you know, the, the deal like UP, you know, uh, to, uh, we, we could be getting a deal like UP, sir. Thank you. Uh, as I uh, have been mentioning in the past few quarters, the reason that we are not including those numbers in our overall inquiry uh, book, as well as uh, we're not specifically commenting on those anymore, is because of the uncertainty about when they will get executed. Okay. Uh, or the certification of those into our order book would happen. We remain uh, quite hopeful because there is positive movement happening on uh, at least a couple of them, uh, and uh, you know it's a question of when that thing finally converts into something which we are able to announce. So as soon as we are able to do so, we will certainly make a the exchange. Right, sir. Yeah, that, that's it for my end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sunil Katari from Unique PMS. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for opportunity. Uh, sir, the, my first question is regarding uh, the management change we are proposing by 1st October 24. Mainly, you are becoming now non-executive, uh, non-independent uh, 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 director. So what is the reason? Uh, because, I mean, what I've found since last many years, we are actively, uh, we are actively participating and the, the way you grown the company profitability with this, the way you are interacting with the industrial community also. So what will change and what are the reasons? If you can little bit explain qualitatively, that will be really helpful. Uh, well, we have, uh, we had appointed the CEO uh, last year, and uh, of which also we had made uh, an announcement on the exchange, uh, including uh, in the various forums with the investors. Uh, that will uh, complete about a year's time uh, in September. And this is a very planned uh, move on part of uh, you know, all the four uh, uh, people, uh, you know, from the from the promoter uh, group, that we need to hand over the operating uh, functions of the company to uh, professional uh, management. Uh, and as announced, uh, the CEO would be taking over the role of the MD. And uh, as far as myself, uh, along with Mr. Dinesh Sharma, both of us will become uh, non-executive, uh, non-independent uh, uh, director, designated as vice chairman, both of us. And uh, also uh, the current CMD, he would be uh, uh, relinquishing the uh, post of managing director. We will continue to obviously remain associated. We will be uh, actively uh, involved in trying to help the company to grow further and in whatever way support its uh, future operations. Uh, as far as the investor community is concerned, uh, uh, I will certainly uh, be available and we'll, I'll remain engaged uh, in the way that uh, uh, we have been in the past many quarters, uh, it's it is uh, probably in the interest of uh, the investors and also for the sake of 
continuity of the organization as a whole and for professional improvement in its management and growth that we have taken this call and uh, hopefully it will usher in a mention of growth and also ensure that we continue to expand the professional profile of the company. Great to hear, sir. And uh, one more question on, sir, the uh, way we uh, develop this chemical segment, resins, chemical membranes, and uh, in a very challenging time of the across the chemical sec, uh, segment of the country and international, we have done really well. We maintain profitability, which is very respectable and very high also. I would like to know from you, because you always mention about the word capability, R&D, new products, new projects. If you can talk a little bit more on how you see next three, five years, what I understand is now the U.S. also slowly coming back to some normalized demand and we are very keen and prepared to penetrate uh, on a higher scale than those markets. So how prepared we are on this segment, what we see for next two, three years? We've always uh, been positive about uh, the chemical segment as a whole and certainly because it drives uh, profitability to a greater extent in terms of margin percentages. Uh, and that's the reason that we have initiated all the capacity expansion moves, uh, both for resins and for other chemicals, uh, which to a large extent are also targeted at the international market. Uh, with the relative improvements in the European and the North American markets, our exports over, uh, of chemicals have improved and we'll continue to see improvement as the quarters go by. That's our uh, hope and also the indication from the others. Uh, we uh, you know, continue to invest substantially on innovations in R&D. And that's the reason also that the product portfolio continues to undergo a change. And we are moving towards more and more value-added products uh, to ensure not just uh, profitability, but also a competitive edge. Uh, in terms of uh, how we are being able to uh, penetrate the uh, markets in North America and Europe, uh, the strategy which we have been following over the past few quarters and uh, uh, few years has been to increasingly create uh, customer confidence and trust and also ensure that we are able to fulfill uh, their expectations while maintaining competitive edge and profitability. Uh, this uh, process has yielded good results and I'm sure that with increased uh, bouquet of products that we offer for these specific markets and the relationships and partnerships that we are continuous forging, uh, we would be able to very quickly uh, take full advantage of the increased capacity to create a much bigger uh, revenue pie coming from the international market. Great, sir. Wish you good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Kishar Ragatati from Kamanakya Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we just wanted to understand in, the, in our chemical segment, uh, what sort of peak uh, revenue can uh, we garner for FY25? Hello. We have been uh, uh, guiding for an overall growth of roughly 15% uh, for the chemical segment. That's the revenue growth that we uh, have been guiding till now. Uh, if there is a change in it, uh, as the quarters progress, we will uh, again advise on the call. Yeah, uh, in terms of uh, capex for the chemical segment, uh, when, when can we see the revenue contribution happening from which uh, year or quarter? 
the current apex which is uh, which uh, is now at a uh, good stage of execution uh, at roha we are expecting the commercial start of that operation to happen in the next financial year uh, and it will take roughly 3 to 4 years for it to reach optimum capacity utilization Okay, sir. And sir, in terms of uh, Saudi Arabia and UAE opportunity, uh, when can we see, you know, a good uh, sizable order coming uh, from there? We are already seeing a uh, uh, good improvement on the ground uh, in terms of our customer interaction relationships and also uh, increased flow of opportunities from that market. We are. Uh, we have started to see an uh, order inflows also from that market i would expect that in another couple of years that geography will start giving us substantial revenues uh sir so in, so in terms of our uh, in, in engineering business uh, any particular uh, segment we are targeting so maybe reverse osmosis uh, or desalination or any specific uh, area uh engineering opportunities in that geography are uh, quite a few and it's not uh, as such specific to a particular technology and we are trying to make sure that our presence is quite broad based uh, we would be looking at desalination opportunities and indeed any other uh, opportunity of sizable uh, or medium sized uh, scale uh, we are sure that with our Uh, manufacturing setup there the uh, the time and scale of opportunities there would be uh, not restricted to a particular uh, size or sector or technology but we would be able to garner much wider scope of business thank you sir thank you thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen before we take the next question we would like to remind the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question the next question is from the line of saket kapoor from kapoor company please go ahead yeah namaskar patni ji and uh, thank you for this opportunity sir firstly uh, about the engineering segment you alluded to the fact of some thing problem uh, with the up project and also uh, with the legacy project sir could you dwell slightly more into when where are we in terms of uh, uh, execution phase for the up project and it was only the elections that was the reason for slower execution uh, or what is the residual value if you could give some understanding sure i'll request uh, wasant to share some of the numbers attached with the project uh, the current uh, status as well as the uh, residual values yeah regarding the up project uh, the current residual value is around 817 crores roughly uh, which as was mentioned earlier we are planning to execute a significant part by the end of the current year current calendar year hello current financial year i mean current financial year and what were the key reasons sir uh, for uh, and can you quantify what the value of uh, uh, the contracted value that we got executed out of this 315 crores that pertains to the up project for the current quarter the up contract execution was around 26 crores 26 crores that's right and 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 a number for march just to compare the pay uh it was around 78 crores it it slowed down a, lo- a lot and said what were the key reasons you alluded to sir this was already explained earlier in the call as well in the last con call that uh, because of the election season being on and the uncertainty surrounding the uh, whole process there was a, a slow down in the overall uh, execution and the funding from for the project which we as we explain is expected to improve as the quarter moves on from the second half onwards 
we expect that significant increase will take place in the execution of this project. Okay, and what was the value of the legacy project that affected the margin for this quarter? Specific project wise, uh, 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 details we don't give other than for the large project. So, this unfortunately I will not be able to share. Okay, sir. Come, now, sir, uh, coming to the consumer product division, uh, I think so. A lot has been spoken about our thrust on growing this segment on uh, for a profitable journey. So, where are we in, um, in midst of reaching that critical mass when the, the segment will start to be? Uh, a, a bit of positive also. If you could give us some uh, uh, some targets or the way forward for the segment for this financial year, we we clocked the top line of 254 crore for last financial year. Uh, what what should we look uh, in terms of growth and how profitable can be or whether when can we return to profitable? Uh, we have been. Uh calling out the consumer segment growth prospects and we remain excited about uh, the growth which the segment is being able to achieve uh, along with the acceptance of the various new products that we have been launching. The focus uh, which we have maintained over the last few quarters and as we spoke a little bit in more detail during the last con call was to uh, ensure that we achieve a much uh, larger scale of operation and therefore uh, without immediately focusing on achieving EBITDA positivity, uh, the primary focus for the time being is to uh, reinvest whatever surpluses are being generated by the business into further growth and expansion of the team, expansion of infrastructure and whatever it takes for the operations to achieve a much larger scale. Uh, hence, uh, the, the primary focus on EBITDA for the moment is, is, uh, is not there. Uh, the primary focus is very much to expand the uh, scale of business and hopefully if we uh, are being able to achieve our overall growth pursuits, uh, we would, uh, you know, uh, quickly reach a scale where EBITDA positivity uh, happens on account of the scale uh, by itself. The uh, margins at a gross level remain very, uh, very good. Uh, the uh, the product margins are comparable to the best which exists in, in the other segments also. It's only that we are investing substantially in overheads, in expansion of its capability, in manpower, uh, the infrastructure. That's it. That is what pulls down the uh, EBIT level of profitability of the segment. Right. And for the, uh, for the year as a whole, sir, what kind of growth? request you to return to the quest. Thank you for follow-up as there are several participants waiting for the okay. tone. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Deera Ram from Ashika Stockbroking. Please go ahead. I said congratulations for the good set of numbers. Uh, so post-budget, uh, what we expect is uh, the water return segment uh, to improve its execution and order inflow. So in this regard, we have seen many companies entering entering into water treatment, sec uh, water treatment business such as Swabag, Wellstone Corp. VP, RPL, civil engineering, and the MS limited. So how do you see, how do you position yourselves in this particular market? And how do you plan to grow from here for the next two years? Uh, well, the numbers uh, which have been shared by various ministries and industry firms, and indeed the policy actions which are being driven by the central government, the state governments and governments at even lower levels uh, are very positive for the water and wastewater industry in general. Uh, I do expect that uh, the investments or policy directions will not just be limited to uh, a large degree of 
infrastructure uh, or civil oriented construction but also uh, increasingly towards uh, higher technology uh, interventions which ensure that companies like us would uh, have a have an even larger play uh, we are only hearing from the government uh, their intention to spruce up action on improving the quality of water not just the supply uh, looking at uh, tackling uh, specific contaminants which affect pockets of our country uh, they are also talking about increased technology interventions at a very distributed level uh, to ensure the reach of uh, high quality sanitation high quality uh, wastewater treatment to recycle to reach uh, remote parts of our country and, and specifically the rural areas uh, along with this the uh, increased focus on uh, making our rivers clean uh, augmenting the quality of our groundwater uh, you know there are several such initiatives by the government which would have an impact on uh, technology companies like us to a large extent then uh, you know when the investments are focused on self construction and infrastructure creation only uh, i do expect the future therefore to be quite interesting got it sir uh, and one more question on what do you expect the return on investment of uh, the roha plant that you are currently working on uh i can tell you that we are looking at roughly a 3 year to 4 year period uh, when we reach optimum capacity and we are also looking at uh, uh, as we have explained several times uh, during the last few con calls that uh, you know out of the 400 crore uh, odd investment roughly around 125 crores is targeted towards uh, specific technology intervention which has uh, other benefits uh, beyond capacity uh, augmentation and the balance 275 uh, on that we should be achieving a, 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 a turnover or revenue multiple of uh, roughly 2 to 3 times uh, so that's um, uh, for you to do the maths uh, our margin levels uh, are not uh uh barring unforeseen or exceptional circumstances margin level should stay in in the ballpark of where we are got it sir and one last question uh what what is the bidding criteria uh, in this epc segment uh, what does one see uh, to go for bidding process is it the bank guarantee or is it the order book or something like that Uh, bidding criteria uh, vary slightly uh, from customer to customer, uh, but they would certainly look at your technical abilities uh, as also your financial capabilities. Bank guarantees and all that come at a much later stage, uh, but primarily they would look at your technical capability, your financial capability, and also what you have done in the past. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Adrus Lakhani from Unifi Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks, Edelman. Uh, so my questions are two. The first one is you have stated that there is a growth guidance of about fifteen percent. If I were to break that up segmentally and uh, you know assume the rates of growth that consumer is seeing. in line with historicals uh, and given that roha has is still a year away and given that uh, you know the chemical segment uh, operating capacity operating utilization capacities are fairly high is it fair to uh, sort of derive that the growth is largely going to be driven by engineering that's question number 1 uh and you know a subset of that is because you mentioned that you know a bunch of up will get completed this year and x of up even you have a fairly good order book so that was question 1 and question number 2 is how should we think about your operating margins for the year 
right uh, so for uh, engineering segment also uh, the uh, indication that we had given when uh, we did our last call and uh, as of today that is what we are uh, stating during the current call also uh, is a 15 to 20 percent uh, top line growth uh, we uh, also indicated uh, we have been indicating that we should uh, be moving towards the margin levels which we achieved uh, in the financial year uh, 22 23 and therefore upwards from what we ended for 23-24. So we are very much hopeful that we will uh, reach uh, towards that level. Uh, and hopefully we would be able to give you a more firm uh, number as we move uh, through the year. Got it. And Mr. Bhatmi, just a quick follow-up on that. Uh, so so you mentioned 15 to 20 percent growth on the uh, engineering side. Uh, today in the chemical uh, plants, uh, what kind of uh, capacities are we operating at? That's roughly in the 65 to 70 percent uh, range. Okay, and so would that mean that you know you still have uh, your your ability to extract greater revenue is still available in those facilities, or is it that the next leg of growth is severely dependent on Roha and Roha coming on stream? No, there is a headroom available there, but of course the aspiration is not just to look at that headroom, but to grow at a faster pace in years to come. Uh, and uh, Doha and the other capacity utilization on the chemical front would uh, aid that. Uh, noted, sir. And sir, uh, could you just expand on that one statement you made that, you know, out of the 400 crores uh, investment in Doha, 120 crores is going into in, in, into enhancement. So uh, what, what, what does that really mean? How does it impact business? If you could just expand a little bit on that, sir. Uh, that 120 uh, crores is uh, uh, into uh, the technology, a new, uh, new area, uh, which could uh, improve the overall uh, profitability. And there are other advantages also which ensue from that. Uh, and uh, we should be able to, uh, you know, Declare it a little bit more openly once the things come on stream. At the moment, we are being a little bit, uh, 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 what should I say, we are keeping it a little bit under wraps till the uh, you know plant becomes operational. Uh, got it, sir. Uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Prati Kathari from Unique PMS. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, so, first Good question, you, you you did mention that we are closer to a couple of contracts, I mean, the larger orders near finalization. So, is that domestic or international? Uh, the ones that we have been talking about, they are international. Correct. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, I mean, I understand the timeline of this usually is very uncertain and uh, uh, nothing that we can predict, but uh, this again from an international side, sir, how do I mean, uh, X of this so that we are close to? I mean, how are we looking at uh, in terms of finalization, in terms of inquiry? Uh, I mean, earlier we were hoping for much more from Southeast Asia, Africa, Middle East. Uh, you can just talk a bit more on that. The target markets for large uh, engineering uh, orders remain the same, which is the Middle East, uh, Africa, and Southeast uh, Asia. Uh, and uh, beyond these large uh, or very large projects, we are getting a steady stream of inquiries as well as orders from that same region. Uh, and therefore, there's an increasing uh, at which we are being able to capitalize on these opportunities. Uh, we are quite sure that you know, with all the initiatives that we are taking in these respective regions, the uh, overall order flow, uh, and it's not just engineering, but also for the other segments, the overall order flow from these regions is going to improve. Uh, 
happening. Uh, is there any anything which is progressing on Sri Lanka order? Uh, uh, Sri Lanka, uh, you know the uh, the pace at which we have been uh, doing further invoicing or execution remains extremely limited. Uh, as we have been sharing, uh, it is a function of the funds which get released by. Uh, either the Sri Lankan authorities or with the intervention of uh, Exim or Government of India, uh, we have uh, seen uh, a few confusion of funds, uh, and that specifically has come from the Sri Lankan government, who have, uh, you know, over the past few months uh, released uh, significant uh, sums of money under the current circumstances. And to that extent, we have also uh, been able to invoice small portions. Uh, the remaining uh, in the contract, which still remains to be invoiced, uh, is not very substantial. It's somewhere around 10 to 12 percent. Uh, and as soon as we get, uh, you know, significant commitments or clarity on further fund flows, we should be able to close out the balance uh, unexecuted portion at a very quick pace, which can easily happen within the current financial year. But then again, you know, we have to be quite clear about how the uh, you know, various uh, fund arrangements are being made and whether we, we can then be certain about you know, closing the contract. Right. And Mr. Last, uh, uh, I think a year or two back, we had announced this expansion in Orissa. Any further, have we planned what are we, what do we intend to do there? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, as of now, there is no further details to share with uh, with, uh, with all of you. Um, but as I had indicated earlier, also we will certainly uh, come back to uh, all of you and make an announcement once there is further. Uh, uh, developments on that front. Our intention is very much to expand capacity for the other chemicals, uh, do some backward integrations uh, in line with what we are aspiring to do in uh, the domestic and uh, certainly the international market. Uh, that's what that particular investment is targeted. Uh, once it reaches uh, the details to share with the investor community, we will do so. Thank you, Naldi Nassim. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to give a reminder that, ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor Company. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, can you give some more color on our recent acquisition, the foreign uh, company which we acquired? Since when we look at the consolidation uh, in the chemical segment and also for the engineering part, the uh, for for the engineering segment the profitability is lower, and for the chemical segment the profitability has improved. So if you could just give us an understanding of what changes between standalone and the consolidation. in terms of profitability. Sir, am I there online? Hello? Yes, yes, Akif, yes, Akif. You are there. Okay, ma'am. In terms of the engineering segment, the reduction in the margin from a standalone to the consolidated is largely on account of uh, some of the losses which we have made in a couple of our engineering subsidiaries. Uh, typically, these subsidiaries, uh, once the scale increases uh, uh, generally in the second half of the year, the profitability uh, should improve. So that largely explains the delta between the standalone numbers and the uh, uh, consolidated of the engineering segment. As far as the chemical segment is concerned, the top line increase as well as the margin improvement is largely because of the consolidation of the subsidiary MAPFIL, which was acquired in June of 23. 
uh, in the last week of June 23. So in the current year, we have consolidated 90 days uh, full quarter numbers, while in the previous year, it was only a one week number. That is largely the reason for the change in the technical segment, top line as well as in the profit and, and what are we looking, sir, in terms of material contribution, growth uh, aspect for this year, and what are the utilization levels there? You should see the growth, what we have seen in the standalone uh, segment of the chemicals, a 15% growth in the material turnover also in the current year. Right. Sir, when we look at uh, our bid pipeline, uh, ma'am, just I would like to conclude, ma'am, so that I can. Only last point, please. Okay. Uh, uh, sir, when we look at the bid pipeline of, uh, say, 8,000 crore and uh, and the type of businesses execution we have done in terms of the UP project, can you give some color uh, in the same vein? How, what would be the value of projects that we are bidding? My, my understanding is uh, what kind of repeat orders or the same set of business we can cater to as we are doing it for the UP Gel Nigam? Uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, our overall uh, uh, inclination is to do uh, more and more uh, jobs in the segments where we make a uh, higher degree of profitability one and where our uh, risk perception is lower uh, while our ability to do uh, contracts of the nature of up or sri lanka or any one of these remains uh, quite high uh, it's always a fun whether we do it or not is a function of whether we get a contract structure and overall uh, comfort uh, you know, for taking up an order of that kind. Whereas, you know, a lot of the orders that we are trying to pick up both internationally and domestic uh, would uh, tend to be uh, in areas, in sectors, and with a margin profile where we feel a little bit uh, better covered in terms of risk. So, uh, you know, it's it's less a question of our ability to multiply in terms of capability, more a question of uh, the specific areas where we want to grow and consequential impact on our bottom line and balance sheets. Yes, sir, that is correct. My question was whether there are more orders uh, in the pipeline or in the, in, your, in the bid pipeline of similar nature of the one uh, for the UP Gel Nigam project which we are executing. My question. Uh, in the inquiry bank, uh, there is uh, that's there is nothing of that nature, uh, but uh, uh, the opportunities exist, uh, and we are evaluating it, but uh, they are not a part of uh, the inquiry bank. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of the Ram from Ashika Stockbroking. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, we were into this demineralization uh, segment, and could you please let me know what is the market size of uh, this segment uh, in India or globally? Uh, we are not uh, into demineralization segment only. I mean, that's a, a small subset of the activities that we do, uh, and there are several other technology areas where we are actively present and which are in fact part of almost all large projects that we do, which includes things like membranes, which include things to do with uh, much uh, uh, much more prior process like a pre-treatment. Uh, and you can get more details about the various technology areas where we operate from our uh, website, which, uh, which elaborates uh, in quite a lot of detail about the various technologies and products uh, where we deal with. Got it, sir. Yeah, uh, I've understood that demineralization is a subset of a particular project. So, uh, it's uh, a subset what of is the, the overall OEM? technology plate? Uh, you know, demineralization is one of the technologies uh, where we operate, but there are several others. That's what I was trying to tell you. 
Got it. Got it. And and what is the O N M revenue that we are uh, currently doing? Uh, so the service sends payers uh, revenue is roughly around twenty uh, percent of our engineering revenue. But I'll ask Vasan to uh, look at the numbers and confirm. Okay, sir. Thank you. That is largely uh, in line with what you have mentioned. Around twenty percent of our engineering segment revenue will come from the services and space. Okay, sir. Got it. Thank you. Thank you very much. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand over the conference to Mr. N. M. Randivi from Ion Exchange Limited for closing comments. Thank you all for participating in this early call call. I hope we have been able to answer your questions satisfactorily. If you have any further questions or would like to know more about this company, we would be happy to be of assistance. We are very thankful to all our investors who stood by us and also had confidence in the company's growth plan and focus. And with this, I wish everyone a great evening. Thank you. On behalf of Iron Exchange Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.